friend. Dost thou live by thy music? No, sir, I live by the church. <laughs> Art thou a churchman? No such matter, sir. I do live by the church, for I do live at my house, and my house doth stand by the church. <laughs> Art not thou the Lady Olivia's fool? No, indeed, sir. The Lady Olivia has no folly. She will keep no fool, sir, till she be married. I am indeed not her fool, but her corrupter of words. <laughs> I saw thee later, the Count Corsinos. Foolery, sir, does walk about the orb like the sun. It shines everywhere. I would be sorry, sir, but the fool should be as oft with your master as with my mistress. I think I saw your wisdom there. Nay, and thou pass upon me, I'll no more with thee. Hold. There's expenses for thee. Now, Joe, in his next commodity of hair, send thee a beard. By my troth, I'll tell thee I am almost sick for mm. one. Though I would not have her grow on my chin. Is thy lady within? Would not a pair of these have bread, sir? Yes, being kept together and put to use. I would play Lord Pandarus of Phrygia, sir, to bring a Cressida to this toilet. I understand you, sir, tis well begged. My lady is within, sir. I will constir to them whence you come, who you are and what you would, are out of my welcome. God save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. Chez vous, café, monsieur. Et vous, aussi, votre serviteur. I hope, sir, you are, and I am yours. <laughs> <laughs> will you encounter the house, sir? My niece's desires you should enter, if your trade be to her. I am bound to your niece, sir. I mean, she is the list of my voyage. Taste your legs, sir, put them in motion. My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean to go, sir, to enter. I will answer you with gate and entrance. But we are prevented. Most excellent, accomplished lady. The heavens rain odors on you. <coughs> is the rare courtier? Rain odors? Well. <laughs> My master hath no voice, lady, but to your own most pregnant and vouchsafed ear. Odors? Pregnant? Vouchsafed? I'll get them all three already. <laughs> Let the garden door be shut, and leave me to my hearing. Give me your hand, sir. My duty, madam, and most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant, sir. You are a servant to the Count Hosino, youth. And he is yours. And his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him, I think not on him. For his thoughts would they were blanks rather than filled with me. I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. Oh, my own leave, I pray you. I bade you never speak again of him. Would you undertake another speech? I would rather hear you to solicit that than music from the spheres. Dear lady, give me leave, beseech you. I did send, after the last enchantment you did hear, a ring in chase of you. So did I abuse myself, my servant, and I fear me, you. Under your hard construction must I sit, to force that on you in a shameful cunning, which you knew none of yours. What might you think? Have you not set mine honor at the stake, and baited it with all the unmuzzled thoughts that tyrannous heart can think? To one of your receiving, enough is shown. The cypress, not a bosom, hides my heart. So let me hear you speak. I pity you. That's a degree to love. <laughs> no. For tis a vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. I then, methinks tis time to smile again. How apt the poor.
four are to be proud. If one should be a prey, how much the better to fall before the lion than the wolf. Be not afraid, good youth. I will not have you. And yet, when wit and youth is come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way. Do west. Then westward hope. Grace and good disposition attend your leadership. You'll nothing. Madam, to my lord, by me, you stay. But can you tell me what thou thinks of me? That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right. I am not what I am. I would you were what I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. <laughs> what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lips. Cesario. By the roses of the spring, by maidhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so that vulgar all thy pride. No wit, no reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I woo, thou therefore hast no cause, but rather reason thus. With reason fetter, love sought is good, but given unsought is better. <laughs> By my innocence, I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has, nor never none shall be mistress of it, save I alone. And so adieu, good madam. Never more will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again. For thou perhaps mayst move that heart which now abhors to like his love. No faith, I'll not stay a jump longer. My reason, if I reason. You must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. Mary. I saw your niece do more favors to the Count's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. I saw it in the orchard. Did she see thee in the wild? Oh, boy, tell me that. As plain as I see you now. This was a great argument of love in her toward you. So can you make an answer me? I will prove it legitimate, sir, upon the oaths of judgment and reason. And these have been grand jurymen since before Noah was a sailor. <laughs> she did show favor to the youth in your sight only. To make your dormouse vow, put fire in your heart and brimstone in your lips. You should have then accosted her. And with some excellent jest, finally, you should have banged into the dumb. This was looked for at your hand, and this was bald. The double guilt of this opportunity, you let time wash off. And you are now sailed into the north of my lady's opinion. Unless you do redeem it <laughs> by some laudable attempt, either of valor or policy. Ain't the any other way. It must be with valor. A policy I hate. <laughs> <laughs> and as leap me a Puritan as a politician. Well then, build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valor. Challenge me the Count's youth to fight with him. Hark him in eleven places! My niece shall take note of this. And assure thyself there is no love broker in the world can more prevail in man's commendation with woman than reform of that. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. But either of you bear me a challenge to him. Go, write it in the marshal. Curse him to me. It is no matter how witty, so long as we eloquent and full of invention. Taunt him with the license of ink. Where shall I find you? Call the particular. Go! This is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. I'm dear to him, lads, and 2,000 strong or so. Look with you, this friend of mine. If you will laugh yourselves into stitches, follow me. Young girl Malvolio has her heathen. He's in yellow stockings. <gasps> and cross-carded. Most villainously. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
I know my lady will strike you. And if she do, I'll just smile and take it as a great favor. Come, bring us, bring us where he is! <laughs> But, since you make your pleasure of your pain, I will no further chide you. I could not stay behind you. My desire were sharp and filed steel did spur me forth. And not all love to see you, though so much as might have drawn one to a longer voyage. But jealousy would might befall your travels, being skillless in these parts, which to a stranger unguided and unfriended often prove rough and unhospitable. My willing love, the rather these arguments of fear set forth in your pursuit. My kind Antonio, I can no other answer make but thanks and thanks. And ever oft, good turns are shuffled off with such uncurrent pay. But were my worth, as is my conscience firm, you should find better dealing. What's to do? Shall we go see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, sir, best first go see your lodging. I am not weary. And tis long tonight. I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and the things of fame which do renown the city. Would you pardon me? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a sea fight against the county's galleys, I did some service. Of such note, indeed, that were I attain here, it would scarce be answered. Be like you slew a great number of his people. The fence was not of such a bloody nature. Albeit the quality of time and quarrel might well have given us bloody argument. It might have since been answered in repaying what we took from them, which, for traffic's sake, most of our city did. Only myself stood out, for which, if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dear. Do not then walk too open. It doth not fit me. Hold, sir. Here's my purse. In the south suburbs at the elephant is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet while you beguile the time and feed your knowledge with viewing of the town. There shall you have me. Why I your purse? Happily your eyes shall light upon some toy you have desired to purchase. And your store, I think, is not for idle markets, sir. I'll be your purse bearer then, and leave you for an hour. To the elephant, do you remember? He says he'll come. How shall I feast him? What bestow on him for youth is bought more often than begged or borrowed? I speak too loud. Where's Malvolio? He is sad and civil, and suits well for a servant in my fortunes. <laughs> Where is Malvolio? He's coming, madam, but in a very strange manner. He is sure possessed, madam. Does he rave? No, madam. He does nothing but smile. Oh, your ladyship would best to have some guard about you if he comes. For sure the man is tainted in his wits. Go. Call him hither. I am as mad as he, if sad and merry madness equal be. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet lady, ho ho. <laughs> Smilest thou, I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad lady, I could be sad. This does make some obstruction in the blood, this cross <laughs> Please the eye of one, it is with me as the very true son it is. Please one and please all. <laughs> what dost thou, man? What is the matter with thee? Not flat in my mind, though. Yellow in my legs. <laughs> It did come to his hands, and command shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? <gasps> to bed? Aye, sweetheart, and I'll come to thee! <laughs> Why dost thou smile so he kiss thy hand so oft? Be not afraid of greatness, t'was well writ. <laughs> what means thou by that, Malvolio? Some are born great. Huh? Some achieve greatness. For what sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust upon them. Heaven, <laughs> me. Go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. Am I made? If not, let me see the assertion. Let us go. Let us this very good summer madness. <laughs> the young gentleman of the Count Orsino is returned. I could hardly entreat him back. He attends your ladyship's pleasure. I'll come to him. Good Mariah. Let this fellow 
father be looked to. Well, where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have a special care of him. I would not have him miscarry the half of my dowry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh ho, do you come near me now? No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. She sends him on purpose that I may appear stubborn to him, for she incites me to that in the letter. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants, let thy tongue tang arguments of state, put thyself under the trick of singularity. <laughs> <laughs> and when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow? <laughs> Not Malvolio, nor after my degree, but fellow. <laughs> Why, everything adheres together. That no dram of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no obstacle, no incredulous or unsafe circumstance? What can be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and the full prospect of my hopes. Well, Joe, not I, is the doer of this, and he is to be thanked! Where is he, With you, sir. <laughs> How is it with you, man? <laughs> Go off. I discard you. Let me enjoy my Sir Toby, my lady prays you have a care of him. <laughs> go, go, go. Peace, peace. We must deal gently with him. Let me alone. with you. What man divided never consider he's an enemy to mankind? Do you know what you say? <gasps> Lie you! And you speak ill of the devil! How he takes it to heart! Oh, oh great God, he not thee be with! Oh, carry his water to the wise woman! Yes, it shall be done! First thing in the morning if I live! Oh, my lady would not lose him for more than I'll say! Oh, no, mistress! <laughs> Him. Let me alone with him. No way, but gentlemen. Gently. Gently. <laughs> the deed is rough. It will not be roughly used. <laughs> <laughs> oh now, my barcock. How dost thou, child? Sir! I didn't come with me. Get him to say his prayers, good sir oh. me. Get him to pray. My prayers, mates. No, I warrant you, he will not hear of oh. godliness. Go hang yourselves all, you are idle shadow things. I am not of your element, and shall no more hereafter. <laughs> <laughs> We shall make him mad indeed. Oh, the house will be the quieter. <laughs> Come, we'll have him in a dark room and bound. My niece is already in the belief that he's mad. We may carry it thus for our pleasure and his penance. Till our pastime, tired out of breath, prompt us to have mercy on him. <laughs> More matter for a May morning. Here's the challenge. Read it. I warrant this vinegar and pepper it. Is it so saucy? Aye, is it. I warrant him. Do but read. Give me. <laughs> you, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. Wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee no reason for it. A good note that keeps you from the blow of the law. Thou comes the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly, but that is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief and exceeding good, says it. I will waylay thee going home, where if it be thy chance to kill me. Good. Thou killest me like a rogue and a villain. Still, you keep on the windy side of the law. Good. Fare thee well, and may God have mercy on one of our souls. <laughs> he may have mercy on mine, but my hope is the greater, therefore look to thyself. Thy friend as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Andrewchick. If this letter move not his legs, he cannot. I'll give it to him. Well, you will have fit occasion for it. He is now in some commerce with my lady, and will buy and buy the heart. Go. Stop me for the corner of the orchard. As soon as ever thou seest him, draw. 
Sandals and draw sway of horrible, for it comes to pass oft that a terrible oath with a swaggering accent sharply drained off his manhood more approbation than ever proof itself had earned. Away! <laughs> Nay, let me learn for the swearing. <laughs> <laughs> now will I not deliver his letter. For the behavior of the young gentleman gives him out to be of good capacity and breeding. His employment between his lord and my niece confirms no less. Therefore, this letter being so <laughs> excellently ignorant will breed no terror in the youth. You'll find it comes from a clodpole. <laughs> but, sir, I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth. Set upon Aguchica a notable report of valor, and drive the gentleman, as I know that you will aptly receive it, into a most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. Here he is now with your niece. Give them way till he take leave, and presently after him. I'll meditate the while on some horrid message for you. I have said too much unto a heart of stone, and laid mine honor too uncherry on it. There's something in me that reproves my fault. But such a headstrong, potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof. With the same behavior that your passion bears goes on my master's griefs. Here, wear this jewel for me. Tis my picture. Refuse it not. It hath no tongue to vex you. And I beseech you, come again tomorrow. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny? That honor saved may upon asking give. Nothing but this, your true love for my master. How with mine honor may I give him that which I have given to you? I will acquit him. Fairly well, the fiend like me. Might bear my soul to hell. God save thee, then, And you, sir. The defense that has to take thee to it. Of what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard end. Dismount thy cock, be air in thy preparation, for thy assailant is quick, skillful, and deadly. <laughs> You mistake, sir, I am sure. No man hath any quarrel to me. My remembrance is very free and clear of any image of offense done to any man. You shall find an otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, to take you to your guard. If your opponent hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish man with all. I pray you, sir, what is he? He is not. Double that hatched great beyond carpet consideration, but he is a devil in a private brawl. Souls and bodies that he divorced, three. And his incensement at this moment is so implacable, the satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulchre. I will return again into the house and desire some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. <laughs> I have heard of some kind of men that put quarrels purposely on others to taste their valor. Be like this is a man of that court. Sir, no. His indignation derives itself out of a very confident injury. Therefore, get you on and give him his desire. For metal you must, that's certain. This is as uncivil as strange. <laughs> I beseech you, do me this courteous office as to know of the knight what my offense to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Mistress Mariah, stay by this gentleman to my return. <laughs> Do you know of this matter? I know the knight is incensed against you, even your mortal arbitrament. But nothing of the circumstance more. <sighs> Why? It's a very devil! I am a pacifist, break your scabbard at all, and he gave me the stuck in with such a mortal motion that it is inevitable. And on the answer, he pays you as surely as your feet hits the ground they step on. They say he has been a fencer to the selfie. Pass on it! I'll not meddle with him! I just will not now be pacified! Mariah can scarce hold me on. Oh, I beseech you, oh, I beseech you, what manner of man is he? Nothing, this man is nothing of that wonderful promise to read El Mada's form. You're like to find him in the proof of his valor. For indeed, sir, he is the most skillful, 
bloody, and fatal opposite you could have possibly thought found in any part of Lyria. Plago, and I thought he'd been so valiant and cunning and bent, I'd have seen him damned ere I'd have challenged him. Let him let the matter slip, and I'll get my horse, Great Capulet. I'll make the motion. Stand here, make a good show of it. Stand without the prediction of souls. Oh, will you walk this way, sir? I'll make your peace with him if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. I was forced to take up the quarrel. I persuaded him to use the devil. And he is as horribly conceited as him, and pants and looks pale as if a bear were in his heels. There's no remedy, sir. He will fight with you for oath's sake. Mary, he has better bethought him of his quarrel, and he finds that that's scarce to be worth talking of. <laughs> Therefore, draw the spirits of his vow. He protests he will not hurt you. Pray God defend me! <laughs> a little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Come, um, Sir Andrew, there's no remedy. The gentleman will, for his honor's sake, have one vow. But he has promised us. Soldier, he will not hurt you. Come on, do it! Pray God, he keeps his oath! I do assure you, it is against my will! I'll make division of my present with you. Hold. There's half my coffer. Will you deny me now? Is it possible that my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, lest it make me so unsound a man as to upbraid you with those kindnesses that I have done for you. I know of none, nor know I you by voice or any feature. I hate ingratitude more in a man than lying. Vainness, babbling, drunkenness, or any taint of vice whose strong corruption inhabits our frail blood. Ah, oh, heavens themselves. Come, sir, I pray you, go. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death, relieved him with such sanctity of love, and to his image, which we thought did promise most venerable worth, did I devotion. What's that to me? Time goes by away. Methinks his words do from such passion fly that he believes himself. So do not I. Prove true, imagination, oh, prove true that I, dear brother, now be taken for you. A very dishonest, paltry boy, more a coward than a hero. His dishonesty appears in his leaving his friend here in necessity and denying him, and for his coward ship. Ask Mariah. A coward? A devout coward? Really? 
village, is it? Sleep! I'll act him again, and I'll beat him again. Do cuff him soundly, but never draw thy sword. <laughs> and I do not. <laughs> Shall we see the event? The daily money will be nothing yet. <laughs> 